Hello everyone and welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce and today we're doing another Indie Horror Spotlight. Today I have a, it's a director and he is with Strange Film Studios and there's a new movie out right now that's called The Gift It. I have with us the director, August Agogor. August, welcome to the Horror Room. Hi Travis, thanks man. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, happy to be on the show. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure to have you on, man. So tell us about The Gift It. Yeah, um, so The Gifted is like, it's yeah, like you said, it's our new movie. Um, we've been working on it for really like in a year and a half, but it's kind of all kind of came in conception about two years ago now. Um, as, of, as of this moment right now, in about 48 hours, I'm gonna, actually going to be in Las Vegas uh, getting ready for our premiere this Saturday, March 23rd. So, um, so it's kind of, it's been a long time coming. So The Gifted is like, um, it stars Ginger Lynn Allen. She is, uh, you know, she was in The Devil's Rejects. She was in 31, mur the recent movie Murder Size and things like that. Um, and it's about a character named Barbara who she plays where she possesses these kind of like these supernatural abilities, almost kind of like along the lines of Carrie. Um, she can control people's will and just can use her mind, you know, for whatever she pleases. And um, we see her in present day. We start with her in present day where she's obviously in some sort of distress and she's being asked, being told to go uh, confess her sins to a priest. And um, it, it, the priest kind of starts asking her questions, and every question is a, essentially her telling a story about one of her sins that kind of made her who she is today and how she got to that point. So it's kind of told like an anthology, t anthology film where we go back in time. We actually span the whole movie across 50 years as far as timeline goes we see three different versions of the character and um it's really interesting uh so yeah we kind of see what made barbara so uh kind of wrong in her ways and why she feels this way to confess these sins but the you know the the horror part of the movie is the priest is definitely like something weird is going on with him you know he's got <laughs> he's got like a whole church full of like these undead assembly members just kind of bouncing around and then she's just kind of you know so it's it's definitely it's a horror drama for sure it's, i mean that's an interesting concept to to break a film down into a almost like you said like an anthology and we get to see the character throughout the years what gave you the idea and inspiration for the story yeah um so you know i had to give um props to my father frank aguilar he's uh the writer and producer of this movie uh we work very very closely together we've been doing making movies since 2016 together. So um, this movie kind of came together from, I would say two concepts. I mean, we always had an idea about doing an anthology film itself, just totally different, unrelated, just doing its own thing. Um, but when Ginger Lynn came into the picture, that was kind of like, she ha he had this other idea for her to um, yeah, kind of blend that idea of her confessing her sins to a priest, which... It, it made more sense to kind of do that in a way where let's do it like an anthology, almost make like three short films within a feature film so we can have a little bit more creative freedom with what we're doing, what we're trying to say with this character. So, um, which we kind of cut our teeth a lot doing short films for the years. So it, for us, it was kind of like, okay, each story feels like its own wacky thing and we're going to lean into that and we just tie the narrative into you know her character and things so um it just it's just a combination of a lot of inspirations inspirational stuff we've been looking forward to doing and having the right people involved and having the right momentum for this project especially for ginger lynn um and it felt like different you know it just felt like totally different than anything we've done and maybe have seen recently so we're like oh let's let's try it like this you know so i think it worked out in our favor though it it, it came out very very exciting the way it's told um like you said i mean it's i mean it's interesting still for me to watch it unfold like that you know and it must have been pretty amazing to get a talent like ginger lynn to be in your movie um she was great in murder size actually i i saw that you know a couple months back fun movie by the way if anybody hasn't seen it so i mean how, how did that transpire um yeah, so Frank was at the New Jersey Horror Con um, film convention, you know, horror convention up in New Jersey, like 2020, I'd say, I guess 2022 now. And um, we were, he was there representing our movie Raven. Uh, our film Raven was playing at the convention. We were up for like five awards and we were just kind of like, uh, he was there representing and 
he saw Ginger Lynn was uh, there as a featured guest, and he just wanted to meet her as a fan because he loves, you know, Ginger Lynn. Uh, and and um, he went up and introduced himself and, you know, bought like a photo op, autograph, all that stuff. And, you know, her agent or whoever was with her at the time was like, oh, you know, she's still a working actress. And he was like, yeah, or he was like, really? And she goes, yeah, yeah, here's my email and gave him, you know, an email. And she's like, if you ever have something, send it my way. And this is how he tells it to me. But when he got that email in his in his hand, he like went straight to the bar, texted me, and was like, oh, "We have to get Ginger Lynn Allen in our next movie." And, and he said the wheels just started turning right then and there. And I kid you not, within probably two months, um, we had like the good. He had like a pretty kind of like a rough, a good rough draft of the script. And I think you know was already sending it out to her agent and that email and everything. And it took about eight months, I'd say, to really lock in everything. You know, it was going through her agent, going back and forth a little bit with Ginger, kind of me and him crafting the story just right and things like that. It took about eight months for all that to kind of transpire and actually complete. But once uh, once it was all said and done after that, I mean, it was the gift that was announced. Um, we did a little Indiegogo, kind of to help raise some funds. And, you know, uh, she came down here to Knoxville in, in May of 2023, and we started shooting. And then we actually didn't wrap the movie until September of 2023. We had to do two parts, two like half the movie in Knoxville and half the movie up in Philadelphia where Frank is in and I'm originally from. So we blended a lot of our uh, cast and crew from both cities and um, made the movie and Ginger was just in the Knoxville scenes. But yeah, that's just kind of how the, the backstory was getting her there. Awesome. By the way, go birds. Oh yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, I, so I was like, <laughs> well, I was going to say, I, I do. I, I obviously I'm from Philly and, um, it, it means a lot to me to uh, represent and and, and uh, support. I wish I was more of a football guy. I feel like I'm not like I feel like I can never talk shop about it. But I'm like, yeah, no, go birds for real. Uh, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm literally. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna show you something right now. Listen, I'm always wearing my birds gear, man. Oh, my man, my man, right all on. the time, man, all the time, man, all the cool, time, dude. That's what's up. <laughs> so, all right. So, as a filmmaker, what was it like to? Craft a story in a movie. I mean, you, you had this actress in place, and now you're going to build your movie and a story behind her. What was that like? It's it's always like trying to put a thousand piece puzzle together. You know, it's like you're just trying to figure it out, and you can read that script, you know, a hundred times, and you still don't know exactly how it's going to end up because think there's so many variables like you know go on during making a movie um i can say it would i always just like how i treat this movie i treat with all my movies i treat it as an experience i'm very grateful for that i'm like excited about so i've a i have a pretty good vision how i think it's gonna be and then working with that person or working with these you know cast and crew um and i just have a good time with it you know like i just mm -hmm. like i i'm i'm very practical and very logistical as far as like what i'm able to do and what i'm able to convey on screen and with my team so we just go into uh you know i told ginger i was like now listen ginger you've been on big hollywood sets you work with rob zombie you've been this you've done that i'm like this is my camera <laughs> you know it was like <laughs> i have a little i have a panasonic gh5 you know it's it's just a little yeah. rinky dinky thing i and i mean it's a great camera don't get me wrong it, it picks up amazing quality and and it looks like a movie but it's like you know, I'm not carrying around a giant rig. And um, so I like, you know, for me, it's just about creating this atmosphere of honesty, creating this atmosphere of um, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to tell this story. And even if it's like we're the, the dial, the lines aren't like exactly there, um, you know, word for word, or we have to rework a scene because uh, an improv it up because it's just not working or something like that's part of it. So we're just going to go for it. and We're going to have fun. We're going to do it and we're going to get it done. So it's like, um, you know, I'm just trying to tell a great story. I'm trying to convey some really great characters. And I really put a lot of trust into my actors too doing that. So Ginger, you know, I was talking with her and I said, who is Barbara? You know, you tell me because all we have is our paper. What we think is what's going on. But, you know, me and her had these conversations for months before she came down and she, any idea she ever had on set was like, yes. All right. I mean, obviously as long as we stay in the same guidelines, if it's something yeah. totally left field, you know, we, we discussed that, but, <laughs> um, but no, it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's just really at this point in my career where I'm still building, it's, it's important for me to try to make, um, 
the best set experience possible and make a movie a very very uh totally i'm caring about the, the quality of everything like i'm, I'm putting 100 percent effort into it but it's not where i wasn't i'm not trying to get into myself intimidated too much about everything because it's like you know i'm just trying to have fun trying to make a good movie and i hope everyone else enjoys it too and you know I, i'm open to ideas that's all it is that's what's important man that's definitely what's important now what is it like to to work with your dad i mean your dad has a crucial part in your studio yeah i i love it man it's um it's a blessing always it's uh very you know it's it's challenging it's because we um we have two very different backgrounds you know as far as our upbringings and and mentalities of things and whatnot but like creatively um passionately we are always really on the same page so when we started this thing together um it was you know when he gets excited i get excited and vice versa so you know we've been doing this back and forth for so long sometimes he gets a little too ambitious and i have to come bring him down sometimes i get a little too ambitious and he has to put me in a reality check so we're, we're you know we challenge each other sometimes we butt heads but at the same time we it's just it's really cool because um he's my dad and i didn't spend too 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 much time with him growing up you know i was living away from him for a long time so being an adult um and spending all this time with him and communicating with him like i do and also creating something with him as you know our our legacy you know is kind of like that that means more to me than you know than, than anything in a, in, a, in a way so it's like it's super exciting to do that um and i'm very grateful i just i'm excited for what to come the next few months here because i think we're going to be going in some exciting directions and i want to see how we handle that and what new ideas we can bring to the table um moving forward because we want to try different things too outside of the things we've already done you know yeah. now as a filmmaker especially in the horror genre how hard is it to stay i don't say original it can it can feel challenging but at the same time um and I'm not trying to like toot my own horn or anything, but I think just between me and Frank, we we somehow do come up with some original concepts and ideas. And I think that's only like obviously like we take influence and inspiration from other movies. You know, like you can watch any of my movies, and I can tell you, well, that movie was inspired by you know Suspiria there or that Taxi Driver there, or whatever that is. You know, like there's there's always something that's inspired these things. But um, you know, we. We the whole idea about strange films is to create a shared cinematic universe, just like Marvel. You know, we're trying to do something like where when you start watching strange films, I mean, however long it goes, we're we're hoping you know we can lead you a trail of breadcrumbs to see like, oh wow, they had like this whole ideas you know even back in 2016 when they first started, mm -hmm. and I think it's um for that it's very important for us to be more original, strive to be more original, and come up with interesting characters and situations and just weird things, you know, like odd situations that maybe people don't see. And if we make a movie that is very similar to something else, it, I can probably bet you and promise you that it wasn't intentional. It was just like, <laughs> Hey, okay. Because I think there was another movie when I put out passenger, that's our, like our third short film. Um, I put out passenger and then, not too long after that, I was on YouTube looking up Passenger, and there was another horror film called Passenger, and it was like almost the same exact kind of premise. Um, wow. Yeah, it was really was like it was like a, a car, you know, someone on the side of the road in a car, and like some sort of monsters around the car, and that's kind of like what happens in our movie. And I was like, "Wow, that is total coincidence!" Like I had yeah. no <laughs> idea that existed. Um, so we're maybe I'm not I'm not saying we're so original. I'm just saying we're we may not be as original as we think, but we really do try to strive to be. Um, original as best we can, you know. <laughs> so I mean, I, I can imagine as a special horror indie filmmaker, it's so it would probably be so easy to go the cookie cutter route. You know what I mean? Find something that's been proven successful yeah. and just imitate that with your, but put your own little brain on it. Yes, and um, we've even thought about that. We're actually toying with one of those ideas right now about you know one of those kind of like a spoof film you know some exploitation film or something like that something like that because you know we know those things get some weird ungodly you know an ungodly attention you know yeah. it's like a lot of attention on these things and the formula works like you said 
my closest attempt maybe would have been my last film called He Comes to Kill, where it's like I'm making a slasher film. This was very much more my tribute to John Carpenter's original Halloween. I took a lot of inspiration from that. Even the jumpsuit, it's total, it's the same kind of jumpsuit, but just different color, you know? It's like, uh, but, you know, total different mask and everything. But it's like, I, um, so we, uh, it, it is kind of, I, I think, I think for us, it's more important right now to be, just like let's just do our own thing and let's see who gravitates towards it and let's push it to be its own thing to so like over time and eventually we're going to get enough people who want to see what we've done you know in that kind of realm in that space but we definitely would love to be able to be like oh yeah also here is you know whoever versus whoever or you know the that you know whatever yeah. is, whatever kind of <laughs> exploitation or whatever kind of like you said cookie cutter kind of like formula we can come up with mm-hmm. because we know it's gonna well, there's gonna be some sort of audience about it. even if it's like the cheesiest yeah. b campy movie ever <laughs> we just want to have our own taste on that you know it's like because exactly how would strange films do that i don't know i'm, I'm curious to find out i don't know because i, I mean i mean listen, guy in the woods killing campers i mean that has worked since the, I mean, since what the seventies, you yes. know, it's 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 proven, it's worked, it's been done on different types of variations. Some are good, some are bad, some are okay, but it works. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, there's another project I'm attached to right now that we are going to be announcing soon, and it's uh, you know, a lot of that is is happening. You know, there's like kind of like that same kind of scenario, and you're like, okay, do we just kind of lean into that you know and just kind of ground that and <laughs> and say yeah because like you said there's there's so many it, since the 70s we've seen that over and over but people are watching that because they want to see oh well how, what, how do they do it you know what, what mm-hmm. what's going to happen next or whatever you know who who is this killer now who are these people who you know so um what's the lore behind that so um yeah i think it's interesting and i definitely i'm not opposed to ever kind of trying to uh conjure you know re, re replay the formula but um i think now that I think we're in the perfect time to start doing stuff like that outside of our original projects, because we finally have made a really, I think a good push of, of our name out there, you know, of ourselves and our work speak has, has spoken to a lot of people. So it's exciting now that we have that support and we can reach new audiences. So maybe now is the time to start kind of just doing different things. That's why I think after the gift, the gift is like our big, like it, it almost feels like, um, one chapter is ending and another chapter is about to begin. So you and your father have been um, with Strange Film Studios. have been around since 2016. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and now how, how many films have you all made during that time? So in the Strange Films world, I'd say there's like, I think there's 18 films right now. Um, between shorts and micro features um there's just that me and frank have specifically kind of worked on and whether he was the writer producer and i or i was writer producer but i've directed everything myself but um you know one of the two um but outside that i mean i've done a lot of different things kind of in in since i became since i started the journey of being a filmmaker i mean I, i over two dozen different projects like i've been working on and that he has definitely you know helped me with you know, feedback and things like that. But the strange films thing, um, yeah, definitely we're we're almost we're almost to that two dozen mark as far as films go. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, all right. So I'm gonna ask you a random question that okay. I ask some filmmakers. All right. So listen, let's say if someone comes to you right now and backs up the Brinks truck, which iconic series? And it said you can pick any iconic series and do your own fresh take reboot on. Who would it be? Okay, you broke up just a little bit and lagged on, oh, okay. like, okay. I, I right. always caught the last <laughs> tail end of the series question, so can you repeat it to me? I'm sorry All about right. that. All right, it's the problem. So, a Brink truck pulls up and it says, listen, we're going to give you this money to put your own spin on an iconic horror franchise. Which one would it be? Uh, that's a good question. Um... I think I'd probably like to go for well I you know my my heart says Halloween because that's my all-time favorite you know franchise but I think I would actually like to go for Friday the 13th um because Jason is such a really really fun character and he can go anywhere like his 
his scenarios are crazy sometimes. You know? Like Jason takes Manhattan is like still one of my favorites in the in the series. Like I just think it's so really? fun. That he, yeah, I just think he's I think it's awesome that he's like they're just like let's take him to New York, even if it's only for forty minutes. You know, like let's just. Yeah. Kill it. Um, I think it's a simple concept. Like he's you know the wood camp killer in the woods kind of deal. Um, that itself can go on for two or three films, you know, and then you, you know, you take that situation, expand on the lore, expand on the characters and the story. And maybe Jason can get out of the woods a little bit too. You know, it's just a whole journey, I think with Jason. And I love how he can just, every time you think he's down, he's coming right back up and just like yeah. how the, the other slashers are, but Jason just feels like this tremendous amount of force, like this zombie freaking nature, you know, kind of deal. And, um, uh, I just think I think I respect uh, John Carpenter's legacy a little too much for me to be like, yeah, let me try that. I, I would love to do it, but not. I, it wouldn't be my first bet. I think I could have a lot more kind of campy and serious fun at the same time um, with Friday Thirteenth. See, I would love for to see someone take like. I, I know you can't do it with Michael Myers, but you can definitely do it with Jason. But to take him to somewhere like you know, I don't know. Somewhere where it looks like a fucking blizzard or something like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, they, like, or, yeah. there's yeah, like, I mean, a fan Alaska. Film. yeah, there's a fan film, I think. Uh, Never Hike Alone, I want to say. I haven't watched it. I've heard amazing things, but it's a fan film for Friday the 13th. And I think it is like in the, like the snow. And there's, I've seen just posters, I think, and it had snow on it. I was like, I'm assuming it's in the snow. I'm like, so that's cool. But, yeah. you know, Jason, uh, yeah, no, but you're right, though. Like something like that, like Alaska, like, like where he just like, I don't know. Let me go to Colorado for this. Uh, you know, let's get all secluded. these. Yeah, let's get yeah, all these. Uh, secluded. In, the ca- yeah. in the cabin this time, you know, these skiers in the cabin. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling no like cops can get this, there. Yeah, hiking yeah, this no mountain. Help. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I would love to see Jason go somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I, I don't know if you see or not, but they're doing apparently they're doing a reboot of Leprechaun. I just that? saw the news of that. Yeah. Um. Well, I I don't really have much to say about it because I haven't seen the original Leprechaun. So, um, really? oh. yeah. <laughs> one thing you'll learn about me, if uh, you know, there's a lot of people, I, I, I just, um, I don't, I haven't seen a lot of movies. Like I have, but you know, there's always, there's always like some bigger name movies that people will be like, oh yeah, well, this movie, I haven't seen it. I'm like. So it's one of those things where it's like I'm a filmmaker, but I haven't watched like that many movies. But Leprechaun's one of them. I haven't seen Leprechaun, but I did see the um, the news. And what I actually appreciated about the news article was I think it was like I want to say I don't know if he's the original writer or director of the Leprechaun movie, but I like that he was saying that we want to really pay homage to the original by like keeping that same like spirit, but also get more bloodier and gorier and still keep the comedy of it and like be able to introduce it to a no- new audience in a new way you know so it's like i think for what i could tell because i think leprechaun is a pretty campy kind of fun time i want i feel like they're going to try to recreate that but in a much more serious but fun way you know so and i think uh yes. yeah so i i'm excited to see it because it's it, ma- it makes me want to watch leprechaun really bad you know yes. see, what, <laughs> see what's up well i actually like leprechaun but but none of the movies are, I mean, part three is good. But none of the movies, for the most part, are great movies. I mean, they're they're pretty bad. I mean, I mean they got Leprechaun in the Hood, part one and yeah. part two, <laughs> Leprechaun in Space. I mean, I mean, they're they're pretty bad movies. I mean, yeah. but they're they're fun. And that's what I do like about those movies. You, you don't go in thinking like, oh my god, I'm gonna be scared or anything. Right. It's just cheesy. B, low level B movie, f- good time. Yeah, and I think that's what's so fun about horror. I mean, you know, a lot of people know that about horror films. Like, you're either gonna have, you know, your pants scared off, or you, you know, mentally fucked up, or you're gonna, you know, just have a good time because it's just so bad it's good, you know. And and it's like I think horror is one of the best communities to be in for that you know you're just ha- yeah. it's just a bunch of people who love movies especially scary movies and of all kinds whether it's a drama or it's a comedy or if it's so bad whatever the experimental stuff you know the really messed up stuff the the franchises everything and people come together for that and they celebrate it and they have a good time and they're, they're nice to each other i mean horror conventions and uh you know comic cons and things like that they're just like they're the best places to be at because everyone's like no judgment 
no nothing everyone's there guests love i mean the 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 you know the people the attendees love the guests the you know, the celebrities and the celebrities love the people the fans everything mm -hmm. it's just an amazing place to be and that's why it makes me very very hopeful that indie films uh mainstream horror horror in general is always going to have an audience no so no matter Thank what you. we all do you know as filmmakers or as viewers we're going to find we're going to find someone or something we love you know so yeah. uh, it's a cool cool space to be in now this it, it, has probably ha happened to you or maybe it hasn't but uh, what if you you made a movie and you're like okay this is i know this is what the audience reaction is going to be they're going to sort of scare them it's going to disturb them and then you're at a screening and people are laughing <laughs> or like how would you react to that uh, you know, it's, I prop. I don't think I'll, I don't think it's going to, if I really truly meant for something to be, and I put my whole heart into it and I was like, this is the moment. Yes. You know, and then it was totally opposite reaction. You know, maybe I get a little, a little upset about it, a little confused, but, um, I've been to screenings where my films I've played and, uh, there was moments where I thought were really awkward or you know maybe like i was like ah, that was my not my best part of the movie and people like adored and loved and was like laughing and clapping too and then i've seen parts where it's like i was intending it to be a very very serious scene like super intense and people are laughing too and i'm like so you know it's always one of these things where it's like as long as the audience is having a good time you know let mm -hmm. them take that perception for whatever they might think you know if it's if it's making them want to rewatch the movie because this is the part where it just gets me every time <laughs> you know like all right that's cool because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, like as long as you're getting some kind of reaction yes out of your audience would it be scared laughing uh whatever i mean you're getting some kind of reaction compared to nothing the audience is sitting there like this yeah and you know, oh. and like I've been in festivals and screenings where it's like that for filmmakers. Unfortunately, that happens. You know, I mean, filmmakers are we're re we're we're weird creatures. You know, we're trying to figure out like how to tell a story, and you know, some people are more invested into the craft than others, and things like that. But for me, knowing how much I'm passionate about this and trying to tell these things in a very serious way even if there's some camp value into it um yeah like getting those reactions whether it's a cheer or a laugh or a, uh, like or like what the fuck you know whatever it is like i'm like i'm i'm like i'm doing my job right yes yes <laughs> like and there's a lot of moments like that in the gifted that i cannot wait to see the reactions on in in the theater so i'm like so it, I, I i really strive for that because it inspires me more because i'm like i think it makes me like really ant for like okay all right all right so i there's some sort of weird you know thing in my brain that's working when i make these movies that i think you know i can keep this up keep this up and, and it's great to see indie horror movies in the theaters on a big screen like I, i've had a chance to see a couple of recently and like it is amazing because like yeah so listen streaming and tv and all that stuff is great but like i felt like movies were made to be seen in a theater in the dark with other people on the big screen. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, it's it's one of those things where it's um, it, you know, you, and just like you, I'm sure, like you're growing up, you're seeing movies in theaters, like it, it feels like an event, like a big thing, and, and if, it, you almost like you take in the movie much more in that capacity too. You know, it's like yeah. I think the last movie I saw in theaters was Godzilla minus one, and that that was probably the first movie i've seen in theaters I, I don't go to the theater too too often now i have a three-year-old son it's hard hard to get out of the house a lot but we uh you know i i uh i went to see that and i knew i was gonna love the movie but holy hell you know seeing it in the theater you're just like taking it all in and that's that's how you see a movie you're just like wow so it's yeah. like for me i remember being um before i even started making my first serious film i was like looking at it, it's kind of funny i tell the story every once in a while but like there's a there's on my first like my, my, my third instagram post like ever like there's like i was working in local news and i actually was covering a film festival and i uh saw the screening i saw these indie films being played on a in a theater screen i just thought that was so cool and i took a photo of it and i said one day i'll have my film play on a screen like this and you know next thing you know like it you know it took a couple of films to get there but i had my film playing in a the theater and i was like whoa this is just surreal yeah. to me you know and it's like 
And I think every theater kind of setting that you have a screening like that, you're always going to get some more more uh, engagement and excitement and applause and hoorah, you know, for all that stuff, you know, for your work effort into that. Um, you know, it, it people can watch things on their phone at home and their comfort or if you're watching in a noisy bar that's not that good but you know it's like uh so it's like the theater screens are definitely very um they're important i think for not only just films in general and watching movies but for indie filmmakers for sure if you can get your film playing in a whether it's a private screening you're you're hosting or a film festival or um you know whatever that is like it that's it's really cool to have that and like i live in baltimore so in baltimore we have the charles theater and he showed nothing but indie films cool cool and like i mean I, I saw midsummer there i've seen you know nice. a lot of great indie horror movies and i don't know i listen I've, I've been all across this country i don't know if every city has their own indie movie theater but i think they should yeah, thankfully Knoxville does now. Um, we've we've yeah. had one about five years now. Central Cinema, which is actually where I'm premiering The Gifted here in Knoxville when I got back from Vegas. Um, they're they're very like that. They're like an art house indie film theater, and it's like 80 seats, very very nice screen, very nice seats, great auditorium, like simple, small but effective. Mm -hmm. um, great sound, great people who run it. Um, you know, you can buy all your concessions, beer, whatever it is, and they play everything from. Um, those really weird art films that are coming out in the low indie theater screenings, you know, from mm -hmm. the mainstream indie stuff like Midsummer or stuff like that. Um, to they actually, you know, I don't know how I don't know how all the logistics works, but they can play, you know, cool classic movies, big, you know, nice big movies and things like that, and make events out of those and stuff like that too. So, and of course, they're really supportive of uh, the indie film scene here because it knocks was pretty good bit or great, you know, scene for the film industry and. Um, you know, we a lot of filmmakers like myself rent that theater out to screen our movies and stuff. Um, I hosted a live podcast there uh, last summer as well. You know, they host film festivals there, so it's a really cool space to be in. Um, but not a lot, not enough cities have them. I agree. You know, there's. Uh, I wish back in, um, you know, my old stomping grounds, Kingsport, Tennessee, had something like that. You know, I wish uh, a lot of smaller towns had that kind of style because I think it would introduce a lot more. Um, creative and films to creativity and films to people, you know, who may not be familiar with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Cause I mean, I mean, and also too, it, it would also force, I feel like a lot of indie, not force, but allow a lot of indie filmmakers to stay in those small towns and not yes. move to the big cities like Baltimore and Knoxville because they have that opportunity. Yeah. It, it would support. definitely, it would definitely encourage them, I think, and support. And I think it's good to have people, who may be doing it for a little while to be examples of that and kind of lead that brigade brigade of it because it's um it can be very discouraging you know a lot of people think you have to move to a big city to make movies and that's not the case you know you, anybody can make a film anywhere and i i think it's i think it's more cool to hear that a filmmaker from Kentucky nearby is making a really great indie horror film, you know, or Atlanta, Georgia over here. I mean, it's a big city, but you know, outskirts of Georgia or whatever, Athens, Georgia. I know there's a lot of filmmakers out there who are doing some cool stuff, you know, um, it, it's just like these little pockets of areas where I think can fill the gaps or be kind of mm -hmm. extensions of bigger cities. And I think like, um, you know, it, it definitely, it's a good example for any filmmaker who are starting out to be like, you know, and, and you can do it anywhere you can do it anywhere you can do it you can be anyone to do it it's not you don't have to go somewhere like la or new york or atlanta or something like that to make a movie you just do it you know just and um exactly. so yeah all right so august where can everyone find you my friend yeah, so um, pretty easy to find. You can go to strangefilmstudios.com. Uh, look that up on YouTube, Strange Film Studios, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're on Twitter as well, or X, whatever you want to call it. But uh, you can look up Strange Film Studios. You will find all of our movies you can ever watch uh, on YouTube, um, on our website, except for The Gifted because it's coming out. Uh, we're we're going to be doing a big uh, select screening and festival run, things like that. Uh, for the for this year, but we sell our merch on DVDs and all of our films and stuff like that. The Gifted will be on DVD this month as well. Um, my name is August Aguilar. You can find my name on the same platforms, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And yeah, we're just out here trying to push our stuff, man, and and celebrate any film and keep making movies and you know see what happens. Keep up the good work, man. Keep Thank up you, man. Work, man. 
And by the way, in, in the description box down below, guys, is going to be the um, link to the website as well as the YouTube page for Strange Films. So go over there, give them some support, like, subscribe, all, all that good stuff. Really appreciate that. Thank um, you. August, it's been a blast. Listen, we, we've been trying to do this for a couple times. Yeah, I know. Thank yes. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I got to do it with you, uh, especially before I take off to Vegas and stuff, because I, I know we're both super busy and things, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad it worked out. And uh, thanks for always uh, be, being supportive of me and like, yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll reschedule. I'm like, all right, thank you. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit happens, man. Shit happens. Yeah, we'll totally. Shit happens. Totally. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the horror room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. See ya.